Thank you so much for having me. Um, Raggedy Chan is brought to you by Pishu Press. Pishu Press offers free downloadable teaching curricula for Raggedy Chan grades three to eight. All lessons are aligned to the California State Reading Standards. Lessons cover reading comprehension, vocabulary, and literary analysis. Chapter one, how Raggedy Chan got her name. The sun had yet to rise when the doorbell rang. I'll get it. Emma bounded down the stairs, two at a time, dragging her favorite rag doll by the leg. Her dark brown hair stuck up at odd angles. I'm coming, Auntie Gracie. She ran across the carpet and threw open the front door, plunging herself into Auntie's squishy waist. Are you going to be my babysitter? Auntie Gracie, a short, elderly woman with slanted eyes and gray streaked hair, returned to Emma's hug. Yes, I here to take care of you. Good morning, Auntie. Laura, Emma's mother, ran down the stairs with her briefcase in one hand and her eyeliner in the other. I left all the emergency numbers on the fridge. Don't hesitate to call me. I raise eight kids, Auntie Gracie said. Emma be fine. Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. Laura paused before the entryway mirror to apply eyeliner to her elegant, oblong eyes. I should be back no later than six. Greg might beat me home if traffic isn't bad. She got to one knee and held out her arms to Emma. Can mommy have a good luck hug for her first day back at work? Okay. Emma peeled herself away from Auntie Gracie. Bye, mommy. Laura squeezed Emma, dropped a kiss on her head, and dashed out. Auntie Gracie closed the door behind her. What do you have in there? Emma eyed the large canvas bag hanging from Auntie Gracie's shoulder. Auntie Gracie smiled. I show you. Come sit on couch. Emma scrambled up, pulling the red-haired rag doll into her lap. Auntie Gracie sat beside her, picking up the doll. This your favorite toy? It's from Grandma McDougal, Emma said. She had a raggedy doll just like this one when she was a little girl. Auntie Gracie pursed her lips and placed the doll on the coffee table. She reached into the canvas bag and pulled out a new red rag doll. The yarn pigtails hung long and black. She wore a bright red dress and a white smock. Her black eyes, stitched of thread, had a distinct almond shape. She for you, Auntie Gracie plopped the new doll into Emma's lap. Her name Raggedy Chan. Raggedy Chan? Emma burst into giggles, hugging the doll to her chest. Wasn't that mommy's last name before she married daddy? Auntie Gracie nodded. You like her? I love her. I tell you about Raggedy Chan. She from China, like me. You like to hear how she come to America? Oh yes, please. Emma snuggled up next to Auntie Gracie, pulling a throw blanket over her legs. I love stories. She cuddled Raggedy Chan. Her other raggedy doll lay face down and forgotten on the coffee table. Auntie Gracie arranged part of the blanket over her own legs. One time, far away, their mountain kingdom called Kunlun. Kunlun rose out of the sea, stretching so tall it touched the sky. With its land green and its water pure, Kunlun was the most beautiful place in the world. The magical plants and animals that dwelled there never suffered from hunger, thirst, illness, or death. Upon the slopes of Kunlun spired Jasper Palace, and within Jasper Palace lived Yao Chi. She was the youngest daughter of Queen Mother, ruler of Kunlun. With skin smooth as jade and hair shiny as the night, Yao Chi was considered a great beauty. The silkworms of her mother's kingdom wove the finest red silk for her to wear. One morning, standing upon a Jasper balcony, Yao Chi heard a flap of wings that drew her eyes upward. A large bird, silhouetted against the sun, swooped toward her. He alighted atop the balcony railing, singing a low-pitched song. From his perch, he stood nose to nose with Yao Qi. He wore a crest of scarlet red plumes. His chest was a dazzling green. Feathers the color of rust bedecked his wings and tail. Both legs ended in large talons. Hello, bird, said Yao Qi. You're new to Kunlun. What is your name? The bird stared at her without blinking. Yao Qi, gazing back, drew in a sharp breath for each of his eyes had two pupils. She recognized him now. Many splendored bird. She'd heard stories of this creature, but it had been many millennia since he darkened Kunlun. You bring warning of impending evil. You must show me. She took a step closer and looked into his double pupils. The top pupils reflected her face back at her. The bottom pupils showed Kunlun from a distance. The vibrant mountain kingdom turned brittle and brown. Waterfalls and streams wasted into dust while trees stiffened and shed their leaves. The creatures of the kingdom shrank with hunger, ribs protruding from flesh. 
Among the desolation walked a short woman dressed in green, not the bright green of spring, but the pale, withered green of a plant choked for water. In her hand, she carried a giant leather harness, which glowed with green light. Though Yao Chi had never seen the woman before, the withered green silk named her. Drought Fury. Long before Yao Chi had been born, Drought Fury had left Kunlun to aid her father in a mortal war. Yao Chi jerked back from Minnie Splendored Bird. Drought Fury returns to Kunlun, she asked. Many splendored bird opened his beak. Mournful song poured out. He unfurled his wings and flew away, song drifting behind him. Uh, thank you very much. I'm sorry I forgot to put this slide up. <laughs> um, <laughs> the uh, illustrator, Joey Manfrey, is in the audience. He's spectacular. So.